USB, well, I was going to say Christmas lights, but are these really Christmas lights? They're all year round lights. And this particular set has 300 LEDs and a little USB controller. And they came, in this instance, I mean, they're probably available from loads of places, but they came from the local supermarket, ShopRite, the Isle of Man ShopRite, in this very generic box marked Global Gizmos, uh, notable down here it says Benross, which is a big importer in the UK of trashy, delightful stuff. But it's a very boring cardboard box. Not exciting at all, but that's okay. What's inside is what matters. Now, although it says that these are rated 3 watts, which would be just over half an amp at the set of 5 volts, when you plug them into a USB power supply, uh, they actually take about 350 milliamps, so closer to about 2 watts. And already you'll be able to see that slight shimmer because this is a static mode. Now I'll show you the modes. Um, and to avoid epileptic things, I'll do it with the uh, the lights on. So, off. Uh, all flashing at once, which is, oh no, and ramping. I think that's the all patterns thing. Oh, it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just all flashing. Horrible. Alternating backwards and forwards, slowly ramping up slightly pointless. Oh, cross-fading backwards and forwards, I'd guess. Uh, yeah, the generic -y, Christmassy light type one. Um, what's this? Uh, all ramping up and down. Exciting uh, and very, very unpleasant. Uh -huh. And then back, hopefully, to static. And because of the way these LEDs are driven, it's not really static. You can see that shimmer. So I'm going to turn the light off so you can see these. It's probably going to... Well, I'll pause momentarily while I do this so I can get the correct exposure to show you what they actually look like. That slight intake of breath, I was going to say, one moment, please. And then I completely didn't. But there you go. Uh, this is a rough indication of the intensity. They're not too bad. I mean, it's okay for... The amount of power is amazing. That's the sensitive of LEDs. You can see that slight ripple, particularly... If I, well, let's take the, exp no, I, I won't take the exposure off that. I'll just suddenly swamp out. But um, you can see that slight ripple because for static, they are alternating backwards and forwards very fast. Uh, the color, because uh, the camera is set for the bench lighting, which is a daylighty white, it's making these look more golden than they are. They are sort of fairly average warm white. Okay, watch your eyes. The light is coming back. The light is back. Uh, I'll unplug these and take this apart because that's what we want to see. I can already see looking into it. I mean, let's take a closer look just through the shell. I can see the ubiquitous 8-pin microcontroller. I can see a decoupling capacitor next to it and a mystery diode. What's that for? Is that polarity? Uh, I can see a little H-bridge driver. That's the bit that alternates polarity. And then one little current limiting resistor. On the other side, we've got a clicky button and a crystal. The crystal is there because these have that. Well, um, it's. let me know what you think in the comments. It's the timer function that turns these off automatically after a certain time, then turns them on the next day. The downside of that is they're going to have to be plugged into a standard USB power supply. If you plug them into a power bank, which would run them for a long time, if it's one of the sort of uh, intelligent ones, a little bar graph that shows you how much energy is left, when these turn off going to standby mode, the power bank is also going to turn off Right, tell you what, where is my spudger? Where is my spudger? I was using it recently for something uh, and I have misplaced it. One moment, please. And I found it. So let's see how easy this is to open without bursting because uh, will it be glued shut? That'd be annoying. No, it's not. It is not glued shut. This is good. It is at the other end. It's got hot melt glue strain relief on the wires. Uh, that was fairly easy to open. I think you will agree. Let's pop that. Oh, let's not pop that out. Let's put some uh, isopropyl alcohol in, which will instantly, theoretically, I'll just put tons in, should theoretically just release that hot melt glue very quickly. Is it going to do it? Is it? Is it going to perform? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's done it. Right. I'm going to take a picture of the circuit board and we shall explore the circuitry. One moment, please. And resume. Here is the circuitry. So if I zoom down this, this is the USB connector coming in the side. It's interesting to note that a lot of the text is up this way, except the outputs are up the other way. That's just an oddity. But we have the USB connector here. I shall just write USB. I'll also write XT here because that is the crystal. 
And the negative goes straight to the driver and the switch here, this is the switch, uh, which links across and there is the little switch contact here. I'll just draw this in an ugly way. So there's the button. Uh, so it's actually using that as a link, one of the connections that goes through the switch to get the negative to the other side to actually power the microcontroller. I presume the microcontroller is marked 863F, probably a custom mass-produced chip from a company that specialised in Christmas lighting software or something, um, but it's based, it's got the same pinout that you'd expect of a microcontroller. So the negative goes uh, across like that, but it also goes around and provides a negative to this device here, which is the H-bridge driver, which swaps the polarity to the output. More on that later. It's called a 2C08F. That drew a blank. That's not a surprise. The positive goes through a polarity protection diode, which also drops the voltage down slightly, which will have benefits for dissipation from that resistor. And uh, there's a decoupling capacitor of roughly 100 nanofarad. I measured it in circuits, so that's not guaranteed across the two pins of the microcontroller. And this is a classic PIC-12 pinout. Um, the switch simply pulls pin 4 down to the 0 volt rail. And pins uh, 2 and 3 are for the uh, crystal, which is probably 32.768 kilohertz. 32.7, that is correct, uh, because that's a nice binary divide, division of one hertz, which is what it'll be using as a time base internally for its timer. That's all the crystal's there for, is the accurate timing of the... Uh, it may possibly run the actual uh, pattern uh, as well, but also the main reason for such an, a crystal like that is for accurate timing for the automatic switch on the switch off mode. The output, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 go to the control pins of the H-bridge driver. Um, the positive connection here that went through the diode also goes to the H-bridge driver. The output from the H-bridge driver, which these uh, instead, these are purple, they look like blue, but they actually come across as, yeah, they are purple. They're not to be confused with this or this. Um, one output goes via a 2.2 ohm resistor and uh, the other goes straight out. And if you want to double the intensity of these lights, change that to a 1 ohm resistor. If you want to use a shorter string and you want to get a longer USB power bank runtime, you could increase the value of that resistor. It's entirely up to you. Let me show you the schematic. It's not that exciting. It's a very simple circuit. USB come in through the polarity protection diode, standard silicon diode, there is the decoupling capacitor. There's the microcontroller with its switch to the zero volt rail. There's its crystal for reference. Uh, I'm making a guess here, 32.768 kilohertz. Because it's a very common timing crystal. The two outputs go to the, the H-bridge, as, as does the power, and then the output goes to the LEDs via that resistor. And here is the uh, truth table of a very similar classic H-bridge. If the two inputs are low, the outputs go high impedance because this is designed for controlling things like motors and it will let us say a motor free wheel. Um, low and high, the output will be negative and positive. High and low, positive, negative. And if they're both high, it will uh, basically shunt the two outputs together for use in the case of motors as DC braking just to stop things abruptly. If that's used, but in this case it's not. This chip may not, have, not even have these features. It will possibly be just a... Uh, a cheap, simpler one. But that is it. Things worthy of note. It would be nice if you could unplug it and it would store the last setting in non-volatile memory. That does not happen, sadly. It just instantly forgets the pattern it had. So if I plug these in, and I focus it to a more appropriate position. Um, oh, actually, you know what? It did hold the last setting, but it doesn't always do it. it after a while, it resets completely to zero. I'm wondering if that's just because the quiescent current of the chip is super low uh, and that capacitor holds a charge just long enough to actually keep that. Um, but certainly when it was left off for a while, it did not hold the last setting. But earlier on when I did plug it and unplug it, it did seem to hold the last setting. Let's do that again. Let's unplug it and plug it. And let's put it to the first really annoying... Uh, well, let's do a really annoying blinky right. We'll do that. Unplug it. Leave it for a few seconds. Plug it in. It is kind of remembering that, but it will forget and reset to zero if it's left unplugged for any length of time. But that is it. They're not super duper expensive. Uh, it's functional. It's 
bright enough for many applications. You can make it brighter. If you want. You don't want 300 LEDs, you can cut it down to 100. And then you could use the strings for other things. But keep in mind, they are the LEDs themselves are wired in reverse parallel all the way along. So if you try to connect it just across... Well, let me... Dem no, I can't demonstrate. Because I've re-sold these wires. If I connected this across 3 volts... Um, one side would light, and if I swap the polarity, then the other side would light. It just makes it more restrictive what you can do with them. But on that, you know, it's a perfectly functional little device. It's fairly straightforward. The circuitry is pretty much textbook. The current draw is very low, so you could get a very good runtime uh, from uh, a USB power supply in these, which makes it quite interesting.